All right, today we're going to be working on solving gra uh, systems of inequalities by graphing. So we're continuing on with our graphing of systems, uh, but this time we're just going to do it with systems of inequalities. So how are we going to do this? We're going to graph each inequality and shade the correct area, and then we're going to identify the region that is shaded for all inequalities. That's the solution. So we're looking for the area basically that overlaps. Like with the uh, equations, we were looking for that po that one point where they overlapped. Now with inequalities, we're going to have whole areas that overlap. Same basic concept, but obviously it looks a little bit different. So let's go ahead and talk about this. So here we have two equations, and we're going to go ahead and graph them. We can go ahead and take our calculator and use our uh, inequalities and graph it. And here's that first one. Now notice again with the equal to sign, it is a solid line. So a greater than or equal to would be a solid. Uh, less than, like this one, is a dotted line. And so this first one shades in all of this area, area one and two. And this one here shades in area two and three. Well, where's the area that they overlap? That's area two. That is my solution. This is the solution because it's the where both of them are true. This is the only section. If I picked a point in region three, this one might be true, but the other answer would be false. If I tried up here, one would be true, one would be false. If I had in the white, both would actually be false. It wouldn't work. Area two, however, this green area, that's the one that no matter the point I plug in, I'm gonna go ahead and get two true statements. So if I go ahead and negative four comma zero and I put negative four in for X and zero for Y, when I go ahead and solve that, it's gonna be a true statement. Zero is greater than or equal to negative 11. And then same kind of thing here. Zero is less than six. And that those are both true. And this section, any point that you pick in here, will make both of these statements true. So the intersection is area two. That is what we want to do. Now on your, on your uh, homework, when you're showing me the answer, uh, you can just obviously overshade this area. If you want to kind of shade this way, you know, sometimes people do it with lines and shade this area down and then this one across so they can see the difference. Uh, sometimes it's really nice to use two different colors, a red, you know, a pencil and a pen or a red pen and a blue pen so you can see the areas that, that overlaps. Let's look at another one. All right, so here we have y is less than or equal to 3x minus 3 and y is greater than our x, x plus 1. We're going to put those in our calculator. And notice what they did here. They only showed the area that overlapped. That's fine. I have no issue with that uh, if that's how you want to do it or if you want to do each of them individually and kind of have this doubly shaded area. Both are acceptable. Uh, and obviously the answer here is B. I'm going to take a look at this one. Notice these two slopes here. What should we notice about these two slopes? If they're the, exactly the same, what do I know about these two lines? These two lines are parallel. Well, remember from inequal, uh, equations, parallel lines meant no solution. Do they here, though? Let's take a look at the graph. And we have this one that goes less than and this one that goes greater than. So is this a no solution? This one absolutely is because there is no part where they overlap. But do they always have to be? Just because they're parallel does not mean that they have to be. What if they went the opposite direction? It would be this part in the middle that overlaps. And so just because they're parallel does not mean that they're going to be no solution here. You have to graph the inequalities and see where the shading is. We could have the top. We could have the bottom. We could have the middle shaded. We're going to have a bunch of different possibilities. Can we also have no solution? Absolutely. But they're not always going to be no solution. So don't, make sure, don't claim that that is always no solution. All right, here's another one. Uh, really easy, y is greater than negative x. Uh, so we have a dotted line and a solid, so we definitely know that this one's not it. So it's gonna be one of these others. That's shaded three areas, that can't be it. It's gotta be one of these two on the bottom, and it's definitely C here. And then looking at this last one here, we have x is less than two. Remember to get x that's up in the top left of your calculator. Uh, you have to go up there. Make sure, again, when we are done doing this problem that you do clear it out. So you don't want to have have that x value keep coming up. Uh, but you can graph the x up there, and you can graph the y, and you should get one of these. Again, we have a dotted and a solid, 
or a solid and a dotted. So no, three sections, no. So we're over here, and it is end up being B when we take a look at it. All right, and that's what I have for you today.